Brocam here, and I'm here to tell you how to get started in ham radio. So to get started in ham radio, you need a license. And how does the licensing work in ham radio? Well, there's three levels of licensing and they're each earned with a separate test. Uh, the first one's a technician, then there's the general test, and then there's an amateur extra test. Uh, a license is good for 10 years and you only have to pass each level once, but you have to take them in order. So if you want privileges from the general license, you have to take the technician license as well. And uh, a common misconception is that you have to know CW, also known as Morse code, to um, get your license and that you don't have to do that anymore. So to expand on each of these uh, licenses really quick, we just have the technician, which is primarily uh, VHF, UHF, and SHF, which is all stand for very high frequency, ultra high frequency, and super high frequency. And that is all line of sight communication, meaning that uh, you kind of have to see uh, where you're transmitting to. So the, and uh, another good way to think about that is your like blister pack, like Walmart radios. Those are um, in a different service are called uh, FRS, uh, which is in the UHF space. Uh, but those are also line of sight. So think about how those work. That's kind of the same thing, uh, but I'll expand more on that in a couple slides. Uh, then there's the general and general opens up every HF band partially, at least I would say 95%. And uh, on HF, that means you can now communicate worldwide. Uh, you're basically bouncing radio waves off the ionosphere and uh, getting to your destination. And then the uh, highest license you can attain is the amateur extra. So with the uh, amateur extra, you just get the full HF privileges, but it's only about, like I said, 95% were open with the general. So you're only getting about 5% more. So it, it is a, a lot more work to get that for not that much gain, but a lot of people do it because uh, it opens some frequency space that are uh, open in other countries. So you can legally make contact with those countries. So uh, what do you want to do with amateur radio? Well, there's plenty of things to do. Uh, here's a setup I had outside. And uh, so the primary thing you do in amateur radio is you communicate with people. You can communicate locally. Uh, that's, you know, tw uh, anywhere from like 10 to at the very most is about 60 miles is what you're going to get out of uh, the local communication kind of sphere. Uh, you can communicate worldwide. I kind of touched on it before. You're bouncing radio waves off the atmosphere and uh, it's making its way around the, the earth. And then uh, you can communicate via satellites. So if a satellite's passing uh, overhead, you can take a directional antenna and point it at it. You do the same thing with the ISS, point your antenna at the ISS and it will, uh, you can communicate through it. It will take your message and repeat it back down to earth where somebody else can hear it. And then they can reply to you by doing the same thing by pointing it back at the satellite and beaming it back to you. Uh, so you can communicate in different modes. So there's voice, which is just how I'm talking now. You just say, hey, how are you guys doing today? Everything's going great. And we might use Q codes or uh, some other nomenclature, but most of that is covered in, in the books. Um, you can communicate digitally. So if you look at this, uh, um, the picture, if you look down that way, I have a laptop on my Thomas the Tank Engine table. Uh, and I can, with that and my radio, I can send emails over HF. I can send, uh, digital messages via keyboard. Like I'm typing to somebody and, uh, I can do all kinds of cool digital things with it. Uh, you can also do CW, which as I said before, is like Morse code. Uh, and I think that that's a, well, it's not required. It's a really worthwhile skill to learn because once you learn CW, the kind of like cost of capability kind of like flips it, you don't need a super expensive radio and you don't need a ton of power and you can get out further with it and so uh you can also communicate while there's other form of communication communications are down think of internet and cell phone 
So we keep seeing that happening a lot lately that uh, whether it be from natural disasters or just uh, people messing up software updates, T-Mobile, Verizon, you know, it's taking down these, these uh, infrastructure where you can't communicate with your cell phone anymore. I put an asterisk there because, well, yes, you can communicate anywhere in the world with ham radio just about. Uh, there are certain factors outside. So there's the power of your radio, uh, whether your antenna is a decent antenna, whether your uh, the, the band conditions are good, meaning the ionosphere is in like a good health to support what you're trying to do. Uh, so so there's there's a little asterisk there just to kind of say that like yes you can't communicate anywhere but uh, you know usually there's a way to get a message to somebody somewhere. Uh, another thing you can do is called uh, fox hunting or direction finding. And that's basically where you take a transmitter and you hide it in the woods or a park or something. And you take your directional antenna and you try to zero in on it and you find it. It's like a, uh, it's a fox hunt. Uh, you can build your own electronics and antennas. So I've got a couple things on my desk here that are just always there. I've got like, this is a, uh, called a Morserino. And if you see, this is a little Helltech V3 lower board, but it's plugged into this custom PCB that somebody made and it's to help with, uh, learning to receive and send uh, uh, CW or Morse code. Another thing I have on my desk, touch on a bit later, is this. This is a 3D printed enclosure for a, uh, a radio that's inside called a True SDX, uh, which is a, a small HF radio. Another thing you can do is experiment. You can make your own modes of communication and I believe the only requirement from the FCC is that you, to do it legally, you can it can be not encrypted or obfuscated in any kind of way. And the uh, method for encoding and decoding has to be published somewhere. So just like make a blog post about it. Another thing to do, which has gotten extremely popular, is to explore. Uh, and I have in parentheses there, POTA and SOTA. And that stands for parks on the air and summits on the air. So that is basically you go to a park and you set up your radio within the park and you try to make as many contacts as you can to, uh, which is just talking to other people. And then you take your log and you upload it and then they get points and you get points and you get awards and uh, award is really just, you get a, a little badge that says you did something, but it's, it's fun. It's a good way to get out there and, and practice your skills. Uh, and as you can see, like in the, the image, uh, I'm sitting in the, the middle of a field with no internet, no phone, no power. I'm running off of battery. And, uh, I think, uh, that was during the solar eclipse, uh, last year or year before. And that's when I, uh, I got a, a bunch of people I was trying to communicate during the solar eclipse to see like kind of what happened to my propagation. So it was very cool. Uh, and that kind of falls in line with the experimenting as well. And another thing people do is contesting. Uh, so I, if I get this video out in time, uh, Hellfest starts today, tonight. So uh, I would love to uh, uh, participate in it. And Hellfest is basically a, you just try to get as many uh, contacts as you can and uh, in a specific mode called Feld Hell, which is kind of like old uh, ticker tape. Um, I've got a video from a couple years ago that you might, you could probably go back and find. Um, but it's just another digital mode and it's, it's a ton of fun. So yeah, I'm looking forward to participating in that. So I, the primary reason I'm making this video is just to kind of tell people who don't know what amateur radio is and they want to communicate with people, family, loved ones, friends, whoever in, uh, in an area when cell phones and internet go down, um, as they seem to keep doing, uh, with increasing regularity. Uh, so you want to communicate. So if you want to communicate locally, you really only need the technician license. Uh, so long as who you're trying to talk to is it within 20 to 30 miles and that's like radio to radio. And again, this depends on conditions. So if you're both in a valley and there's a mountain between you, like you're probably not gonna be able to hear, hear each other. Um, but say like in this picture here, you can get that range up to about 40 to 60 miles. If you have a mountain in the middle of you that has a repeater on top. So basically if somebody was down in this valley over here and they talked to this repeater, this repeater would rebroadcast everything they say 
and say you're on this side of the mountain would broadcast it down to well 360 degrees but broadcast it down to to your side of the mountain and you would be able to hear them and you could talk back to the repeater and it would broadcast and they would be able to hear you so that is one way to kind of extend your range but the the total range is about 60 miles and that's in very specific conditions and this is also the cheapest way to get started uh, so the tech license one test and then the 18 dollar baofeng uh, I'll have links to this in the description, uh, at, from Amazon. And, uh, this is, sh should be the legit radio, not counterfeit. It's $18. So let's say you want to talk worldwide. So, uh, with the technician license, you can do some DX and, uh, DX, I should say is, uh, basically talking outside of your own country, but, uh, for the purpose of this, anything beyond, um, let's say 60 miles. So you can do some some of that with the technician license. So you have permissions on the 10, what we call the 10 meter band, which is uh, 28 megahertz. And the, um, but you're, you're kind of limited in what your options are. So if the band conditions aren't great on 10 meters, you're kind of stuck there. Uh, but that's why I recommend going for the general license. Once you get that, you get 95% of your privileges uh, so, and the, I don't think the test is too hard, uh, the general, uh, the only test I found kind of challenging was the amateur extra. Um, and with SDRs, uh, HF radios are getting cheaper and cheaper. So SDRs stands for software defined radio. Uh, that basically just means that, uh, there's a little computer in there that does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So like this little true SDX, I believe is around 115, $120. I will put link in the description, but this is an HF radio and it's like the size of my palm. And uh, so this will do CW and voice. You can also hook up to your computer to, to do data. The only thing is that this is, I think about five Watts is the max output. So it's not very strong, but it can get you HF propagation. Um, and there's different ones for different bands, but I think this is 10 through 80. So, uh, it's a very cool piece of piece of hardware. So what do you need to test? Well, the required materials, you have to sign up for an FRN, which I believe stands for federal resource number. Um, and that is basically an identi a unique identifier to you from the FCC that any license you get from them will be tied to. And uh, so I have two licenses. I've got my amateur radio license, which is amateur extra uh, K8 ARH. And then I also have a GMRS license, which is a different radio service that you can sign up for. And um, you just have to pay for it. I can't remember how much it is. You just have to pay for it. There's no test involved and that will cover you and basically all of your family um the only downside to it is is that it uses the same frequencies and channels as frs uh, which is like the blister pack from walmart and um it doesn't do hf radio so you're kind of stuck with that local local comms but it does support repeaters so you can do repeaters with it uh so that is another option and then uh you're going to need a book or an audiobook to study from. I've got links in the description to my favorite ones. Um, I like, I really like the ARRL M license manual. I did that for tech in general. And then for my extra, I did the ARRL man manual and a, uh, audio book called, uh, the fast track to your ham license. And I think that was invaluable because I was basically able to study for the whole test and learn everything I needed on, on vacation. On, on my drive down to Alabama and back. Uh, you're going to need an appointment with a VE team to take a test. And you can find, if you want to do it online, you can find where to do that at hamstudy.org. I'll put a link in the description. You should be able to find an online test or even, I believe you can find in-person testing there as well. Uh, you're going to need 15 to $30 for the exam fees. And I, I think... Some of them might not have exam fees, but I, I think at the, there most of them around $15 and, uh, some optional stuff you can have some other study materials, hamstudy.org, like I mentioned before, 
is great for uh, t uh, practicing and reinforcing your knowledge and taking practice exams. So it will ask you random questions from the question pools for whatever you're studying for. Uh, it will also do simulated exams where it will ask you uh, the appropriate number of questions. So for tech in general, it's 35 questions. And it will, from the, the appropriate number of questions from each category, basically. And it will tell you and track your stats as you keep taking them. So you can kind of see like, I'm kind of like lacking in the electronical, electronical, electronic components department. Maybe I need to study that some more. So it's a really good tool. Uh, a calculator for the test. There are restrictions to what calculator you can use. So if you don't know and you don't see it in their FAQs or anything, ask. Um, if you're taking it online and you're using the ham study platform, I believe that the calculator is built into that. Uh, and most of the, uh, math you don't really need a calculator for. It's, uh, not really to get to the amateur extra that you might really need that in, in my opinion. I know some people struggle with math. Uh, and last thing you're going to need is some determination that uh, you're going to have to actually study, um, the technician is a pretty easy test. General's a little harder. Um, amateur extra is I had to study my butt off to pass that. So, uh, a lot of people ask like, well, do I just memorize the answers? That's a very touchy topic. Uh, some people have no issues with you memorizing every single answer on the test to pass. Other people think you have to become a radio expert before you even attempt to take the test. But like with most things, the gray area, my opinion on it, the answer is always somewhere in the middle. You should try to learn everything you can, but ultimately you only need to know what's on the test and you can learn more once you're licensed. If you're, if there are concepts you're really struggling to understand, you can memorize the answer or you can even reach out to an existing ham. We call them Elmers. That's kind of like a mentor uh, to see if they can maybe help you understand it better. Uh, there's a few things I memorized and really, I think it was not that I intentionally memorized them. It's just that uh, repetition from practice test after practice test. Um, but once I could actually practice my skills, I gained a, a more fuller, complete understanding of the subject. Once I was licensed, once I was actually able to implement these skills. And lastly, a reminder that this is amateur radio. No one should expect you to be an expert in this hobby before you ever have a chance to transmit. This is, this hobby is amateur radio. Uh, you should understand the rules and, uh, basically how to be safe and not step on people. But as far as a lot of the concepts go, you can be what we, what people call an appliance operator. Somebody that just buys their radio, buys their antenna, uh, and just sets it up. They don't have any kind of, any kind of science or anything into it. They just, they basically pick all their parts off the shelf. That's totally fine. And with that being said, that's the end. This went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I think it's I had some really important points. And, uh, as I said, there's a ton of links in the description to kind of help you get started with, uh, you starting your journey in amateur radio. So with that being said, this is the bro cam day in 73, 73 is what we say when we mean like a good day or like goodbye or like have a nice day.